Hey guys, what's up? Alrighty, here we go. This is the budget run. Uh, and we're going in extremely budget gear. So one of the big comments, or some of the big comments that I've been seeing you guys, from you guys on my previous videos, is, uh, you know, the strategy is really nice, it's really good. But what if I don't have a shadow? What if I don't have a scythe? Uh, for the boss, what if I don't have Torva? What if I don't have Ancestral? You know, can this be done without all that gear? And the answer is yes. It definitely can. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. This is a less than 200 mil run. I'm bringing about 100 mil in gear and a heart. Right? So, that's 200 mil. Uh, the heart's nice. It's, it's really useful. It's helpful. It's definitely not necessary. We can do this without the heart. Uh, in which case, we'd be using about 100 mil worth of gear. Um, and actually, yeah, shout out to these guys. You know, I, I guess they noticed me. I'm, I'm on world 443. I'm, I'm just on, you know, one of my favorite worlds. <laughs> and, and these guys kind of popped up. So shout out to all you guys and uh, say hi, YouTube. But uh, yeah, we're going to be running this with basically uh, Bandos and a whip. That, that's what we're going to be calling the boss with. This is going to be our tank gear. And um, our, our main mage weapons are going to be the, uh, the Trident of the Swamp. And, of course, a, a, a staff to auto-cast um, Blood Barrage with. So we're using a Ancient, uh, the, the Blood Scepter. Um, other than that, yeah, Prims, you know, Arims, Crystal Shield, you know, very Iron Man friendly stuff here. I, I think most Iron Man have this gear, maybe minus the heart, but the heart is not necessary. We can definitely do this without the heart. Um, I'm going to be splitting this up into two separate guides, one for the boss and one for 11 waves. So welcome to the 11 wave guide, guys. Uh, yeah, here we go. Let's, uh, let's send it. Uh, 11 restores, 8 brews. Should be enough. Um, one thing I've learned from doing these budget runs is that we absolutely, we cannot be taking um re-entry we just don't have the dps to be dealing with re-entry especially early we can maybe take it late uh but yeah we we can't be we can't get stuck with re-entry early if we get re-entry like very early on um yeah it, it gets really scuffed so that's probably our number one enemy uh with a budget guide like this or with a budget setup like this is no re-entry so yeah, like always, we'll uh, we'll be starting with blasphemy. Uh, we'll start on our engage title, and we're going to be doing tick perfect engages using the visual metronome. So here we go. Start with blasphemy, and wave one doesn't matter. We're just going to take everything down as fast as possible. Oh, very nice. That was that was actually awesome. And we'll actually whip when possible. So whipping is definitely the way to go um, on a budget run. So if it's just you and one monster, focus on your whip. Otherwise, for the most part, when solving waves, when getting our waves set up, when uh, when dealing with a long-range monster, we're just going to be uh, using the mage gear that we see here. Uh, yeah, solar flare is maybe okay. Bees definitely not. Uh, we'll go with myopia. Myopia is uh, it's a no-brainer. We'll take it in pretty much any run, regardless of our setup. So we will click continue on one, and we'll run to A on one. So here we go. Click. And when it says one, click. And there we go. The wave gets solved right away. So we start with, uh, I should have had my mage gear on. We will freeze really quick. Run away. Oops, I forgot to set up for blood. And then we can just uh, blood barrage the clump. And this is how we'll deal with the Fremies in pretty much every wave. We'll deal with them just like this. Alrighty, there they, there they go. So, to break up this stack right here, because we have the Major in the back and the Ranger up front... We'll pray range. Oops, actually, let me uh, let me deal with this guy really quick. We don't need to pray against him, right? We're in a budget setup. 
Uh, one of our restrictions is supplies. This is a longer run than normal. Kills take longer than normal. Um, and we need to be able to save as many supplies as possible. So, as I was saying, we'll run down here. We'll pray range. And we'll run a couple steps out. Run back in. Pray mage. And that drags the major down. Right? So that's how we're going to be able to drag down majors if they're in that kind of orientation otherwise let's do a little lazy flicking he's attacking on was it three yeah, he's attacking on three so i lazy flick on two it's a little awkward when you're doing a four tick weapon i i don't really like uh the timing of the whip kind of throws me off when i'm doing lazy flicking but if we focus on the visual metronome, it makes things easier. Alrighty, and uh, yeah, when it's just one isolated monster, when it's only one monster, um, we're, we're just going to focus on whipping. You know, when we're dealing with multiple monsters, when they're long range, that's when we'll use our uh, mage gear. But if it's just one monster at a time, or if we're only dealing with one monster, whip is king. Melee is king. Right? In a, in a budget setup. I mean, I, honestly, like like all, all the time, melee is kind of king. But in these budget runs uh, specifically, uh, when we're trying to conserve our supplies, when we're trying to keep as many supplies as possible, uh, melee is king when you only have to deal with one monster at a time. So yeah, we'll just be dodging mortars. And uh, hope for some decent invos. The real thing that we want to stay away from, what I've learned, is uh, re-entry. Even re-entry 1. God forbid re-entry 2. But even re-entry 1 is really, really bad for these budget runs. Do not want to get stuck with them. So let me throw that mage gear on. And what do we got? Myopia. Maybe volatility. I'm okay with volatility, so I'll take this as well. And when they both get leveled up, that means I'll just get more myopia and more volatility. So there we go. Nice, easy spawn. Let's freeze these guys when they get settled down. And then we'll just barrage the clump. Right, and this is how we're going to deal with the Fremies uh, on pretty much every wave. And like I said, this will be a guide for the 11 waves. This will be an 11 wave guide. Um, I try. I, I want to do a voiceover for the boss. You know, I'm, I'm not... It, it's hard for me to talk live commentary while I kill the boss. So it will be split up into a separate guide. Um, but we'll be using this this uh, gear when we get to it. You just dodge the mortar. Right? And when it's just one monster at a time, or if it's, even if it's two monsters and they're like, they're both rangers, or maybe they're both majors, or they're both mana cores, uh, as long as it's the same style monster and we don't have to deal, you know, with fancy, you know, stepping or... Um, prayer flicking techniques. Um, we'll just use our whip when possible. It, it's faster. So there we go. He's down. Let's top ourselves off a bit. And because he's the melee, we'll just mage him from afar and not waste any prayer. So yeah, the top, the key takeaways on these budget runs are conserve your prayer. Conserve your supplies. Obviously, do your tick perfect engages, of course, and really stay away from re entry. So, when they're like this, when you have a major in the back, or I mean a, a ranger in the back and the major up front, we can just do a little wiggle and that'll break them up, right? So, that was a nice little wiggle, breaks them up, and we can deal with one at a time. Oops, and if it's just one at a time, like I said, we may lay them down significantly quicker and he's attacking on four so I can lazy flick on three it does save supplies it's not necessary we can camp 
prayers. We definitely can. Oops, forgot about that. But we got a Blood Fury, so Blood Fury will do a little bit of healing for us. Maybe it tops us back off before the uh, the wave is over. That'll be nice. Not 100% necessary. Yeah, there we go. Blood Fury is awesome. I really recommend that for pretty much any of your runs. It doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a, uh, a budget run or not. There we go. Back to our engage tile. Throw our shield on. And uh, we can really take anything now. We now have uh, Volatility, Blasphemy, and Myopia. And those will carry us through quite a few waves. So we can just keep leveling those up. Doesn't matter which one we take. I guess we'll take Volatility. Or I mean, uh, Blasphemy. Right. Freeze the cluster. Barrage them down. Nice and easy. And when it's just the major left, what are we going to do? We're going to melee. No need to use piety. We can just take them down one at a time. Even if the reinforcements show up and another major comes in, right? We can just deal with the two majors one at a time. And the whip is pretty good. It usually kills them in time. All right. We could be, we could be lazy flicking if we want to say prayer. We could be piety flicking, so there we go, piety flick. Oh, I'm not used to that uh, four tick timing of the whip. There we go, a little piety flicking. Right, it just speeds things up a bit, it's not necessary, we don't have to do that. We can just whip them like normal. As I said, we could be lazy flicking. The meleeer, uh, because that manacore is stuck there, we don't want to. We don't want to step out on this. Well, I guess we could. Yeah, let's just step out. That'll drag the manacore, right? That drag the manacore down. And now I can just heal off this guy. Am I still on blood? Yep, I'm on blood. So I'll just heal off this guy, get all my health back, and then I'll switch to my tray. Now I don't have to waste any prayer for this guy. You know, we could be meleeing him, but I'd rather be conserving supplies. Oh, I forgot. Blood Scepter actually gives me an overheal. So let me uh, let me actually top that off. Yeah, Blood Scepter is great here. The overheal is nice. I mean, why not start every wave with, uh, what's that, 108 health? Take him down and we can whip the mana core. Oops. So he's unawoken. I don't need to pray right away. So, yep, we don't need to be wasting piety on these guys. We don't need to be wasting offensive prayers. We're not in a rush. We just kill them slow and steady. Just make sure we don't get hit. We don't want to take that extra smite damage to our prayer. If you're worried about getting your uh, tick perfect prayers off, put it on early. Oops, you messed one up right there. Not even worth it. Maybe Blood Fury gives us a little bit of healing. The worst part about it isn't necessarily taking a little extra damage right now. It's draining that prayer because that is going to be one of our limiting factors is the supplies we bring on these budget runs. Alright, there we go. Throw that Mage Gear on. Get ready to Barrage. And we're already going into Wave 5. So what do we want? Let's stay away from Quartet. No need to be dealing with Quartet. Let's take Myopia. So we click on one and click on one. There we go. We got a Ranger. So we're going to be maging him down, right? He is long range, so we're going to be... Oop. I don't know why I didn't hit that melee. I must have misclicked. Can we kill him really quick? Keep that prayer up. Alright, and let's kill... The Ranger. Just be careful of his mortars. Now, in these budget runs, we really don't have the DPS to be winning DPS checks. So, if that Major came down in front, if we did get stuck with the Major in front, we, we only had two options at that point. 
we uh, we would either have to off tick or switch pillars. We do not have DPS in these budget runs to simply just be out DPSing these guys. We're not going to kill the ranger in time, especially when we're maging in this kind of gear. Uh, so off ticking is definitely um, more necessary, I'll say, in these uh, in these budget runs. Um, or you have to be willing to switch pillars, and it's very useful to know which pillar are you able to switch to. So I have other guides out there that are worth watching that show what kind of scenarios um, do we want to go to which pillar, right? So we have three different pillars. We have the south pillar, the diagonal pillar, and the northeast pillar. And depending on what our layout looks like, depending on how the monsters are kind of aligned can help us determine which pillar is actually worth going to. Okay, so if you want to go check out the, the, the last video, I'll have it linked in the description. And I do have bookmarks, timestamps. Uh, I have timestamps in that video that help it easier to recognize, you know, what kind of situation do we want to, like, it, depending on the situation that we find the wave in, um, how do we know which pillar we're going to switch to? Okay, so that's very useful information. Let me, uh, let me actually put my heart on. Who knows why I'm not using it. That's literally half my budget is all in the heart. We got it. We should be using it. But yeah, when you got two monsters right next to each other, or a monster next to another monster is, uh, Southwest Tile, which I have marked... Uh, Blood Barrage is kind of nice. It does, like, that double DPS. It hits both of them at the same time. Alright, he's down. Let's just start whipping. Can he see me? I don't know. Uh, no, he cannot see me. Get away from the explosion. Too slow. That's okay. Now we just flick the mana core. Make sure we, we remember he is going to explode, so we don't want to be standing next to him at the end. Looks like our Blood Fury did its job. Topped us all the way back off. Is that charged? It's kind of charged. Only got a thousand charges left, so I might have to be careful on that. Should have had that fully topped off before I came in here. Oh well. I might get that last hit off with mage so I'm closer to my engage tile. Let me actually get over to that side. Oop, nope, he's down. Alright, what are we going into? Wave 6 already? Wow, we're already going into wave 6. So this is going pretty smooth. Uh, let's stay away from bigger explosions. Let's just take uh, Myopia 3. That'll start giving us new invos to choose from. And we can always be taking more, uh, we can still be taking Blasphemy and still be taking Volatility as we go on. So we'll click on one, click, click. Alright, and we got a Major. Oops, I forgot to put my Mage gear on. So there we go, freeze the clump. Barrage it down, that'll give us a full heal back, right? So just kill that clump as fast as possible. Because we have the Major down here, it's actually pretty spooned. Because when the reinforcements come up, we might have a Major, but it'll just be two Majors. You guys die. There goes one. And let me just whip this guy. There he's down. Dodges a little explosion. And get back to the Major. Right? Here come the reinforcements. Looks like the Major got trapped, which is okay. It kind of would have been nice if he came down here. But, uh, yeah, sometimes they get stuck in that little nook and cranny. One of them, maybe the Melee, maybe the Major. Uh, spooned Wave. Easy Wave. We'll step away from this guy really quick. Dodge that explosion, right? Turn that prayer off. 
can mage this guy down. Right, and because we have two rangers right here, I don't think the major can hit me. I'm not sure. I guess we're going to find out. But we're going to try to whip the ranger. We are going to try to whip the ranger. Hopefully the major can't see me. If you can, we'll reevaluate. We'll end up switching pillars. But yep, here we go. Let's see. Can that major see me? No. So I can just uh, I can just whip down this ranger, and after that, we will probably be going south. We will be reevaluating and going south after this. After we can uh, stabilize the stack. I'm gonna dodge that mortar. And yeah, because uh, because the ranger is kind of stuck on the edge of that mana core, they're all everyone's going to kind of move and shift at the end of this. The major is going to get stuck. So here we go, right? Mana core moves over. Major gets stuck. He comes down here. So we can actually just deal with the major really quick. Did the mana core see us? Nope, mana core didn't even see us. So the mana core is still unawoken. He hasn't shown what his attack style yet is, is yet. Uh, so he's kind of random. So what we're going to do, instead of waking him up and worrying about needing to off tick, we're just going to run south, right? So pray mage against, or pray range against him. There the mana core awakens. We could have stayed there. In hindsight, we could have stayed there, but it was random. We didn't know what style he was going to be. So now we just deal with just the ranger, right? Throws his mortar. And we whip them down. So that's the thing. In these budget in these budget runs, um, the mage will work. The mage will definitely work for uh, for longer range fights. Um, it's nice for barraging. But if you don't have a Bofa... Now, Bofa is better, right? I, I do want to be clear that Bofa would be uh, stronger. You would kill monsters significantly quicker if you had Bofa. Um, over mage, I mean, right? Uh, specifically, like, uh, uh, with respect to mage. Um, but let's say we don't have Bofa. The Colosseum can definitely be done without any of those things. Uh, well, we could probably... We, I mean, gosh, we, we can probably even do it with a D-Skimmy. But uh, we're using a whip, you know. We're not we're not that budget, guys. We don't we don't need to be going as budget as possible. I'm pretty sure most of us have access to a whip, you know. If we're doing this content right, if we're trying to do this content, most of us have access to a whip. Most of us have access to arms. Most of us have access to a trident. Uh, of course, a crystal shield, a, a, a dragon defender. You know, this is. Very, very budget. I'm trying to make this as Iron Man friendly as possible. Let's start working our way over toward the engage tile. Don't get that explosion. There we go. We're already going into wave 7, so let me put that mage gear on, right? Keep forgetting to start in the mage gear. Let's just top off the prayer. Why not? Throw that heart on. And we'll begin the wave. So let's see. How about Blasphemy? Blasphemy is pretty free. We'll engage on one. So here we go. Click. Click. All right. Easy peasy. Freeze them all. Brush the clump. And this is another free wave. Now, you guys might be wondering, you know, am I getting very lucky? Uh, are, are these waves lucky? Yes and no. Yes and no, right? Uh, when we use the engage tile and do this tick perfect engage, the only possible monsters that can hit us, right? Out of all the spawns that they could spawn in all around the arena, the only monsters that can hit us are ones that spawn on A or B. 
So if you only get one of them to spawn, doesn't matter if it spawns on A or B. If only one of them spawns, then you got to deal with one monster, right? By the within the time that the um, the reinforcement shows up. If they both spawn, you have two options. Okay, you can be off ticking, right? And you might have to be off ticking when dealing with Fremnix, which gets very stressful. And if that's the situation, when when this is happening, when they're, when they're both on you. Your best option, if you don't want to off tick, is to often run to this northeast pillar. See, right? All of these guys, everyone who spawns up here, they'll get stuck behind the northeast pillar. One of these guys, right? So we'd start here. We'd run over to A, right? They're going to get dragged into us. When they get dragged into us, chances are a large majority of the time, all of these guys will get stuck. They'll get stuck behind this pillar. One of these guys will probably get stuck behind the pillar as well. And usually it's the one on B. The one that's on B, he'll like work his way around. He'll work his way around and you'll be dealing with him. So if you get a really nasty spawn on A or B, and or A and B, I should say, and they both come toward you, the northeast pillar is usually my go-to pillar if I decide to switch. Never go south. Going south is very, very dangerous. You're basically running straight into the A and B spawns. Don't go south. But going to the northeast is a very positive place to go so anyway let's deal with these right we're gonna end up going south for this we'll pray major and we'll put our tanker on we'll pray augury for some bonus defense ranger hits a 17 ranger hits a zero and now the wave is solved everyone gets stuck right and we can just deal with the ranger so let's actually, because he did hit us a 17, let's just, uh, we'll heal ourselves a little bit. We'll overheal. Get that 100 plus health, right? Because we do have a Blood Scepter. Uh, it's actually a really nice benefit of the Blood Scepter over even the, what, Cody is like, I think Kodai Wand is like 120 mil right now. Kodai Wand is really expensive. So, okay, we got, uh, let's get one more hit. One more good hit, get that full HP, and then we'll just whip him. There we go, 108. Boom. Oop. Dodge the mortar and take him down. We don't need to worry about lazy flicking. Got plenty of supplies. We're already going into wave 8. Dodge the mortar. Now, because that minute or not the Minotaur, because the Manicore is still unawoken. Oops, I think I just took that damage. Yeah, oh well. Uh, because the Manicore is still unawoken, let's not chance it. We don't know what his style is yet, so we'll just run over here. We'll switch pillars again. Pray Mage, of course. Manicore wakes up. See, and we made a good call. So hindsight this time says that we made the right call, because now we don't have to off tick. Deal with them one at a time. Just use wet. That Blood Fury probably heals us back up to full health, and maybe we even overheal a little bit on the Major. Let's see. Hopefully Blood Fury does its job. Otherwise, not too much to worry about. Just got to be uh, flicking the Mana Core. Looks like Blood Fury did its job. Going to top us off. And we'll just get that little bit of bonus health. We don't even need it. We don't even need it. I, I think we'll just uh, we'll skip the bonus health. It's not a big deal. Uh, as we killed the Fremies in the next wave, we'll just overheal naturally off of that. What wave was this? This is wave 7, so we're going into wave 8. Let me dodge that explosion really quick. There we go. Nice. Almost forgot about it. 
Uh, and maybe so I can get closer to my engage tile, maybe I will get that last hot hit, hit off with, uh, with mage. Come on. Manual casting so annoying. Alright, please go down. Oh, I should probably put my heart on. There we go, he's down. Alright. Get back to our engage tile. We got our mage gear on. We got our barrage gear on. And it looks like we're going to have to take volatility. So bigger explosion. So we'll engage on one. Click on one. Click. Click. Alright. Very nice spawn again. And we'll be able to do a full overheal. So freeze them all. Barrage the clump. Let's even take that off. We don't need that on. Right, stay far away. The explosions can't hit us. Oops. All right. They can when they do that. Yeah, myopia is so annoying. Okay, and now we'll just wait out for the Minotaur. And then we'll talk about how we're going to deal with this wave. And if you've watched my other guides, you might already know what we're going to do with this wave. But we'll talk about it when we get there. All right, move away for him. Let's just do a full blood barrage and actually uh, step away one more for the explosion. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about what we're going to do with this nasty stack, right? Going to be very hard to deal with these two because they're both going to see us at the same time. Then that manacore is going to get woken up. Luckily, he's still asleep, but he always will be if we're doing a tick perfect engage. Okay, so what do I call this? I call this a three stack, right? One, two, three. We got a three stack right here. And instead of dealing with this nasty three stack all on this pillar. And if you've watched my other guides, you'll, you'll already know what we're going to do. We're going to run diagonal. We're going to run diagonal for this one, guys. So here, let me take down this minotaur a little quicker now that we've talked about it. Um, but if we go diagonal, we will be able to deal with all of these monsters one at a time. And we'll be able to use our whip. You know, we're not going to have to go out into the open uh, or off tick multiple monsters. We're not even going to have to deal with it. So we're just going to run diagonal as soon as this uh, Minotaur goes down. How are we going to do it? We're going to put our tank gear on. We're going to put our melee gear on. And we're just going to protect against the mage. And whatever the uh, ranger does, you know, whatever the ranger does, the ranger does. We'll just tank it. Maybe we got to eat through it, sip one brew. It's okay. We're going to be prepared to sip a brew just in case. But we're basically just going to tank, or we're just going to uh, camp Prey Mage as we run diagonally. All right, and this guy does not want to die, so I'm just going to go in and melee him. I have plenty of prayer. All right, there we go. So here we go, guys. Ready? I'll throw that shield on. Pray mage and a defensive prayer, so augury. So throw them both on. Run diagonal. Get ready to brood, just in case. Zero. 43. Yeah, I sipped a brood, just in case. Right, and the wave is solved. Look at them all stack up. Very nice. I can just deal with the mana core one at a time. Blood Fury will do its job a bit. Give me some of my health back. Otherwise, if you're a little worried about your health, you can always brew. We got plenty. We brought eight brews. We've barely touched them we've sipped one dose of brew this whole time so if you're worried about staying low health don't be afraid to brew you don't need all of them they're there for a reason click yellow guys but yeah it uh, looks like uh, blood fury doesn't want to do much for me at all does it where's my heels
Maybe it would have been nice if I brought a second super uh, combat just for the waves. I guess I didn't think about it. Yeah, wow. I, I don't think Blood Fury proc'd a single time. Oh, that would have been nice. Alright, and let's just kill the front uh the front ranger. Oh my god, now Blood Fury wants to go off and heal a one, bro. Come on, come on. Dodge the mortar, here comes another one. Dodge the mortar. Get some free heads off, right? We'll just camp uh prey range. It's gonna get a little scuffed when this guy falls. Because that Major is going to be coming into a really nasty position. So we will end up switching pillars again. Hopefully we can get some heals off. If it, if the heals don't go very nicely. Um, if, the, if we don't get much healing, we will be brewing a little bit before we switch pillars. Because we risk taking... Uh, we're, when we switch pillars, we usually risk taking two hits. Oops. My bad. So yeah, let me just brew up a bit. Just to be safe. Yeah, I I I thought I timed that right. My bad. We got plenty of brew. Like I said, no point in staying low. Here's that second mortar. Wait it out. There we go. Just take them down one at a time. No need to be wasting piety. We're not in a rush, especially with the budget run. If we're doing a budget run like this, right, with very low gear, uh, there's really no reason uh, to even try to be rushing. Don't don't even bother. Okay, so now we'll run over here, right, and that'll stack them up very nice. So we throw that defensive prayer around. We're gonna pray against the mage. And if that ranger hits, oh, there's a mortar, and maybe he hits? That's okay. We weren't chanced. We had 54 health. That was fine. So now we have an option. We can just whip him down, or we can heal with blood barrage. Let's see if we can get a good whip off really quick. Not getting much blood fury. Let's just heal with uh, blood barrage. Get all of our health back. Take it nice and slow. We still have plenty of super restore. Use this as an opportunity to heal. This is why we have the blood spells. Blood spells are very nice. Get all of our health back without wasting any of our brews. It's one of the major reasons why we like camping barrage spells. So let's talk about it. As you can see, in these budget runs, especially if you don't have a Bofa, right? It goes a little quicker with a Bofa. But if you don't have a Bofa, you're not meeting any DPS checks, even with your whip, right? Unless you did bring extra super combat and you are willing to do some piety flicking. Um, we're not winning any DPS checks. Look at all these mortars he's throwing. He's already thrown like three mortars since moving over to this pillar. Uh, we can't afford to have re-entry. If we have re-entry on, our areas get completely filled with the golden pools. We cannot deal with it. I've tried it before. It's extremely difficult. Is it doable? Yeah, it it's doable. Uh, I'm not going to say it's not. Um, it makes it a lot harder. It makes it a lot harder. Reentry is a big no-no. If you're absolutely forced into taking reentry, especially before wave, like, I don't know, I'll, I'll just say, like, what, wave 7? I don't know. If you're forced into taking reentry anytime, semi-early, um, it y you might just want to reset it. It is not worth it. it. It's really not worth it. 
It's extremely stressful. It makes the waves very, very hard. You got to do a lot of pillar switching. You got to do a lot of just running, running out in the open. And if you're not meeting DPS checks, there can be so many monsters alive still. And you really got to be worrying about like DPS checks. So here, let me actually top off so I can get that overheal. The overheal will be nice. Blood Scepter will get me my overheal. There we go, 102. Can I top out at 108? There we go, perfect. Alrighty. And I think we're going into wave nine. Wow, we're already going into wave nine. Yeah, so re-entry, it's basically better to take almost anything over re-entry. Um, I'd even, I'll, I'll take Relentless. Relentless isn't that bad anymore since the nerf. So let's see, we'll engage on one, click. Click. All right, another very spooned wave. This is nice. Oh, why is it, why am I splashing like that? What a pain. Wow, so I, I, I didn't really realize, but uh, I, I guess you can splash in the budget gear. Uh, not good. I, I don't like that at all. So you can splash in budget gear. Did I have Augury on? I don't know if I had my Augury on or not. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like that. I do not like that. But we'll just wait out the Minotaur. Um, there's no way we could DPS check these guys. Um, and whatever damage we did do, the, the Minotaur just would have healed it back to full. So there's no point in rushing, wasting prayer, trying to get some extra hits on the Minotaur. The Minotaur, or the Minotaur will be healing them as he spawns. So we use this as a perfect opportunity. We don't have to waste any prayer, right? This is free. This is free. We can just sit back, overheal up. Those Fremies did a little damage. I didn't like that splash. Um, I don't actually know, um, gosh, I thought Mage always hits. Either I'm misclicking or something's going on with, uh, with my gear, or maybe it's because I'm unhearted. Um, it might be kind of like the, the Red Crabs at Maiden, if you guys have done Theater of Blood before, um, where when you hit a certain Mage accuracy level, um, you have a 100% hit rate, and you'll never ever splash. But, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. I don't like that I'm splashing on, uh, on Fremnix in the budget setup. But it is what it is. You know, if you're going to be running a budget setup and you want to do this method, um, I, I, I guess you might have to deal with splashing. Kind of sucks. All right, two-way mana core. So they always attack off cycle as long as they saw you on the same tick. But we'll just melee him down. And we have to be wary. We know he's going to explode when he dies. So we'll just keep our eyes on that. When he gets really low, we'll be prepared to run away. I'll heal up my prayer a little bit. Uh... When this first mana core goes down, and I'll drag that second one in. It's got about 30 health. One more hit. There he goes. Get away from the explosion. Now we can kill the second one. So let's top that prayer off. Alright, let's just go all the way. Top it off all the way. Kill that mana core. So it's really not that slow overrun. It's it's slow if you're using magic the whole time. If you're maging everything, it is significantly slower in the budget run. But if you can isolate monsters one at a time and deal with monsters just one at a time um, with your whip, uh, it, it, it goes actually pretty quick. Um, I mean, what? This is... I'm not exactly how sure how long I've been in here. I'll, I'll check when the wave finishes. But uh, it, it should be it should be like well under an hour. Get away from that explosion. Drag the ranger out. Bring him in. 
and we can whip him down as well. So yeah, no joke, um, if you can isolate your monsters and kill them one at a time, whip is king. Melee is king. I'm gonna take him down, get ready to go back to our engage tile. We are a little overbrewed, right? Watch out for that mortar. But we are a little overbrewed. I think that's still from the Blood Scepter from earlier. But as soon as he goes down, he's got about 34 health, it looks like. Dodge the mortar. We'll just look for a big head splat. Or uh, a big XP drop. Not quite. Not yet. That might be it. There we go. All right. Put that barrage gear on. And what do we got? What do we got? Oh, kind of getting forced into Solar Flare. I don't want Doom. We're not going to take Totemic. We're never going to take Totemic. Uh, I don't want to deal with Doom because I do know the, you know, the final boss is going to be pretty long. Probably a five minute kill. Uh, I don't want to take Doom. We'll just take Solar Flare. So Solar Flare 1 is okay. Uh, and we'll engage on 1. Here we go. Click. And another spooned wave. Very nice. Love it. Alright, yeah. So yeah, that, that totally splashed the major. I know I didn't misclick. I can actually whip him. And now we'll just kill the major. Yeah, I don't like that. So it must be something like... Um, It must be something like mating crabs, where when you're above a certain um, magic bonus, magic attack bonus, you'll never ever splash. There we go. Uh, we can probably just overheal off him. And we'll deal with the wave. So how are we going to solve this? Let's think about it. We got this nasty ranger in the back. Um, mana cores are still unawoken, which is okay. We don't know what they're going to be. They could be range or mage. Let's think about it. What happens if I run diagonal, right? If I run diagonal, this ranger and the mana core gets stuck behind. They definitely get stuck behind. Uh, so will the major. The major will also get stuck behind. The ranger will come around the side. So we can 1v1 the ranger. And I don't know where this mana core will go. He might get stuck behind or he might follow the ranger. And then we just deal with him after the ranger. So I think our safest bet... Actually, here, let me throw my uh, staff on. I think our safest bet, because the mana cores are unawoken. So we don't have to risk taking any damage from them. And we can just pray range against these two rangers. That will just run diagonal. And the only damage we'll take while running is what like one hit from the major who cares we can we can tank that that, that doesn't matter at all we can take one mage hit from a from a weak guy like this so that'll be okay so that's what we're gonna do we're running diagonal and that's the whole thought process behind it that's why we're gonna run diagonal so here we can even throw augury on right maybe we defend that mage hit there's the mage hits coming and that's the only hit we're gonna take look at that Look at that. And I think we made the right decision with these mana cores going mage instead of range. So here we go. Drag this guy in. And we'll go whip him down. Easy. Simple. Right. And what do we got? We got mage mana cores. So we can probably even whip down one of the mana cores after this. We'll talk about that when we get there. Tons of supplies going into the final boss. Well, actually, we're not going into the final boss yet, right? We do still have Wave 11. Uh, I know Wave 11 can get kind of messy. Uh, one thing that a lot of guides don't talk about, um, they they often say that... Um, oop, let me dodge this really quick. Uh, they say Dynamic Duo is free, 
right? And it, it kind of is, right? It's not that bad. It makes Wave 11 sometimes, sometimes it makes Wave 11 just horrible. It makes it really scuffed. So I don't like saying the Dynamic Duo is free because it isn't always free. It really makes Waves um, 11 specifically, like 8 and 11. It can make them very, very scuffed and very dangerous. So uh, yeah, Dynamic Duo is okay if you have to take it, but it's not necessarily free. Anyway, these are Majors with a Mage, so we can just off take all of them. Double Mana Core Flick, right? Here we go. We're just, we're kind of watching the Solar Flare Ball. Oops, missed one. That's okay. And I just stepped back for the Solar Flare Ball. Um, I, I don't want to deal with it. I, I don't want to accidentally move out to the point where the Ranger could maybe see me. I'm just, I'm a little worried about him. Right, we're not even using Piety. We don't need Piety. One more hit. Right, and get back just in time for the solar flare. We'll just go like this. Just because I'm, I'm a little worried about the ranger, I am. We're just, we're focused on our double mana core flick. Move before that solar flare ball gets in place. We'll move right now. Pray mage. Right? We do, we're in budget gear. We, we can't just nuke these guys down. They're not just going to fall, so we have to play a little safe. Right? But we're not in a rush. We're just, we're trying to get our quiver in a very budget setup. Right, and now, let's see. How do we want to deal with this? Can we get that Major down? Yeah, we can get that Major down. And I think now, I don't think the Ranger can hit me if I go there. I don't think he can. But we can actually play it really safe. We can actually just switch pillars, right? The Major and the Mana Core are on tick. So we'll just switch pillars. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Looks like the Ranger did see me. We tank one hit. We're okay. Now we just deal with that mana core when he gets down here. So here, I'll come down here. Flick, flick, flick. And I can drag him in. I can actually drag him in. Let me do it one more time. Perfect. Now I can just kill the mana core. Maybe Blood Fury does its job and heals me up a little bit. We're going to have to move out of the way for that solar flare ball. Right? Let's not even worry about it. Just get out the way. Let it pass. No need to be rushing. Let's play it nice and safe. The DPS doesn't matter. What's one more whip hit? Literally, what, what, what's one more whip hit? Not worth it is what it is. Don't worry about it. Play slow and steady. Right, here comes that solar flare ball. We'll just move out of the way. Don't need to get it back in. We don't need that one extra whip hit. It doesn't matter. Kill him when it's safe. Want to take him down quicker? Throw you. Oops. See, it's not even worth it. All right, and because it's the Major next to the Ranger together, we can barrage him. We'll get that double barrage off. I can just stand right here. Oops. And we can get that double head off, right? Because they're, uh, they're adjacent to each other. So let's top off that prayer, get that prayer up. Watch out for the solar flare ball, right? Get out of the way for it. 
And this will fully top us off, right? We'll get overhealed and everything during this. Let's throw that heart on. We haven't been using much mage. Kind of forget about it a bit. But like I said, you don't even need the heart. This whole run can be done without the heart. This could be a sub 100 mil Colosseum run. This could very easily be done with under 100 mil. Let's get out of the way for the solar flare. Wait for it to pass. There we go. We get right back into it. Fully healed. 108 health. We're good. We're golden. No need to be rushing. Take it nice and slow. Is the major down? Not yet. That might get it. There we go. We can just whip this guy down and get over to our engage tile. Here we go. One more hit. Oh, not yet. Not yet. There we go. Oop. Doesn't want to die. Come on, man. All right. We're going into Wave 11. We have tons of supplies for Wave 11. Tons of supplies. So what do we want to deal with? We could probably take Volatility 3. It's probably safer than Relentless. I think... I don't know. Do we want to go with Volatility 3? We stand on A... Uh, let's not. Let's just go with Relentless. So here, I'll top myself off. Get that prayer up. Throw that barrage gear on. We already got our heart on. We're overhealed. We'll just hope for a nice wave. So here we go. Click. Click. All right, and we got a major. The wave is solved. This is a perfect wave. Yeah, I think it's because I don't have my augury on. Maybe. I'm just go whip that guy. That'll kill him. Throw that melee gear on. Kill the mage. Don't need that on anymore. And he's down. And the wave is already solved. The wave is literally already solved. Let's just put our mage gear on. Fix my inventory a little bit. Nothing can see me. And I kill... Oh no, what happened? That sucks. Can I drag him in? I don't think I can drag him in yet. I'll drag him in soon. So we'll kill the Minotaur first. Right? Can even get that extra blood barrage off. Get fully topped off. Because we are going to have to run out here to drag that Major in. Which is what we're going to do. We're going to drag that Major in. Right? But this is it, boys. This is a budget run. This is a bunch of run, and we have, like, literally just as many supplies, like, almost as many supplies as we have in our normal runs. If you've watched any of my other guides, these are the kind of supplies that we end the run with, and it's exactly the same thing. We have tons of supplies for the final boss. I think we have more supplies for the final boss on this run than we actually have in our, in our, normal, in our normal runs. Like, we really do. We can play it safe. We can solve the waves the exact same way. We can always be, you know, we can do our tick perfect engage. It oftentimes gives us spoon spawns, very nice spawns, very high probability. As I said before in the video, right? The only chance out of all the different spawn locations around the arena, the only two spawns that can actually hit you when you do a tick perfect engage are either A or B. And it's not a big deal unless they both spawn. If they both spawn in here, let me uh, let me actually drag uh, let me let me drag this guy in really quick so I can melee him. So to do this, right, these this mana core, so I might have to flick this mana core, which kind of sucks. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. He got dragged in, so now I can deal with him. Uh, and let me actually, I'll, I'll just mage him so I can talk. Um, so if A and B spawn, right? If A and B both spawn, let's say you got a mana core here and a ranger here, right? Or maybe it's reversed or whatever, or a double mana core or something like that, right? Who knows, right? And you do your tick perfect engage. You start here and you run straight to A. You start on engage, you run straight to A. I always run to A, right? If that happens, oh, I don't want to take that damage. 
Um, if that happens, I like to go to the northeast pillar, right? Every one of these guys, look at them all. Look at all these guys, right? Let's say two of them spawned on A and B, right? All of these guys, if I ran around here, right? I'd run around here to the northeast. They all would have gotten stuck. They all would have gotten stuck. And the only one that would have been able to come over and reach me, I'd run to A, right? And they'd kind of get dragged in. They'd get dragged in. And then I'd loop around and I'd go over here to this tile over here. The only one, he'd kind of creep around the side. He'd creep around the side and it would be B. It'd be whoever spawned on B. And he'd be able to see me if I ran over here. So if you don't want to off tick or off ticking is, you know, it's too scary. If you don't do it, if you don't know how to do it, if you don't want to do it, right? It doesn't matter. Um, if you get a spawn on A and B, I love running around to the northeast pillar. And very oftentimes it makes my wave spoon. It makes it much, much easier than if I just sat here, right? And never go south. God, if you get a spawn on A and B, never go south. That's that's really bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, northeast. Northeast is the way, guys. Northeast is awesome. So anyway, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll do a double mana core flick. And they're all mage, right? Mage, mage, mage. Three mages over here. So I can just double mana core flick. Throw that heart on. Here we go. And I can just stay here until he's down. Just double mana core flick. The major just falls in line. The major is nothing to worry about as long as I do my double mana core flick. We'll take down that first mana core. And then we'll run back over to our safe tile B. We'll run over to B as soon as this guy falls. And that'll drag the major down. So as soon as this mana core falls, we'll run over to B. And we can deal with the major all alone. He'll just be dragged right on down. just focused on our mana core flick that's all we're worried about until that first mana core falls and we already have a strategy for where we're going next we're running to B So is it a little slow with the mage method? Yeah, but that's why we did whip. That's why we mostly did whip. We tried our best for every monster spawn to get something isolated where we could just deal with one at a time. And then we just did whip or melee or whatever you have, right? Fang is okay. Fang is okay. Whip is okay. Because the mage method, if you don't have a shadow, it's very slow. Saying is similar. Ancestral doesn't help much. Here comes that major, right? He came down just like I said he would. There he is. And we can just whip him. Right? We'll kill the major and we're down to the last two monsters. Right, guys? The Colosseum is done. Look at our supplies. Look at our supplies. And in an extremely budget run. Right? Not bad at all. Now, here's the deal, guys. We could go into the boss and kill him. We, we could easily take the supplies that we have and go straight into the boss. But I want to be able to talk while I kill the boss. I like to be able to talk and give commentary as I do it. And it's very hard for me to concentrate and talk during the boss at the same time. It, it's just difficult for me. So I will have a part two video where we killed the boss in this exact same gear. Uh, probably pick it up exactly where we leave it off on this video. So we're going to finish this up. We're going to kill these last two monsters. Um, we'll break it there and I will have a second video. Maybe it's uploaded tomorrow. Maybe it's uploaded in a couple days. But this video is coming where we kill the boss in this exact same gear. And that fight will have a voiceover commentary. So I can kind of describe what's happening. Not in real time, but we'll talk about it while we kill the boss. I don't want to just kill the boss in silence and you guys watch me kill him while I, I just click around, right? I, I want to be able to talk, but I want to be able to give you guys clear and concise commentary. 
So uh, that will be a separate video. I'm sorry we're not going to put it all in this one guide. But uh, we'll have a separate one for that so you can see how do you kill Sereddit. How do you kill Soul Heredit? with uh with this budget build setup right and we're just going to be killing him with bandos and a whip so we'll get to that uh shortly after this we will have a second guide for that but for now i hope you guys learned a lot from this budget build this is very doable guys just you we're using the exact same strategy that we use in my other guys we're using the exact same strategy nothing has changed the only thing that changed was our gear and our DPS. And as I said, the most important takeaways, the biggest thing that you do not want to take in these budget runs is uh, do not take re-entry. Re-entry is literally the, 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 uh, the run ending inbo. If you get forced... Now, if you're on wave 11 and you get forced into taking re-entry, that's okay. That, that's fine. But if you get forced into taking re-entry very early on in your run and you're doing a budget setup for whatever reason, just just reset it. It's not worth the pain. It's very, very difficult to do a re-entry run uh, when your DPS is just so low and you just can't meet the DPS checks just simply because of gear. It's not worth it, in my opinion. Um, y you might just want to reset the run as as you know as annoying as that sounds um it might just be what you need to do uh but i hope you guys learned a lot i hope i was able to be clear about what i would do if monsters spawned on both a and b i hope you got to see what were the kind of scenarios where we decided to run diagonal how did we do the tick perfect engage um and i hope it was clear we don't need the heart this can be done this can absolutely be done with 100 mil in gear. Or it's actually less than 100 mil in gear, guys. Like, let's take one last look at the inventory. It's just Bandos, a Blood Fury, a Whip, Prims. That's it. This gear is dirt cheap. This gear is so cheap. The Mage Gear setup, the Mage Gear setup isn't even 10 mil. The Mage Gear setup is so cheap. We barely used Mage. We barely used Mage, which is why you don't need the heart. The heart is not necessary, and we can do this in these budget runs. So I hope you had fun. Uh, I'm going to make a Soul Heretic guide with voiceover commentary, and we're going to jump in exactly where we left off. So I hope you had a really good time, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.